Carwell being trapped by some of Europe's big hitters. We're going to discuss Mikhailo Mudrik and what you think about his form since he joined the football club. And we're going to talk Raheem Sterling and your opinion of him. And will he start for Chelsea in the Carabao Cup final? All of this in this particular video. Make sure you stay tuned. Drop a like on it. Subscribe to the channel. And let's get started with Levi Colville. So, according to Nizar Kinsella, report on the Evening Standard, Colwell is being tracked by Paris Saint-Germain and also by Liverpool. And the reason these guys are hovering over Colwell is because they believe that Chelsea are in a financial situation where, as we all know, and it's been reported, some homegrown talent will be sold from the football club this summer. Now, we're talking Trevor Chalobah, Armando Breuer, for example, maybe Conor Gallagher, which I'll never understand, but also Levi Colville. As we all know, the FFP and stuff like that, we need to balance our books. And when you sell a homegrown player, an academy product, it's, pr it's pure profit on the books compared to anything else. And you expect at least two of those players to go. I'm not saying Carl will, will go, and I don't think he will. I don't think Gallagher will go, but I think Chalabat and Breuer probably will. So the two of those going from the football club will probably equate to around 50, 60 million, maybe, which hopefully will be enough. But, but this whole situation about having to balance the books and stuff like that, it's because of Bowley and, and, and Clear Lake and Iqbali and all their just ridiculous spending, which we all know. But... Surely, if we're going to go forward as a football club and we're going to go forward with a football team, a young team that we can nurture together, keep the nucleus of them together over a five-year period, we need to keep out of our best players. For me, Levi Colwell comes under one of those as one of our best players. Colwell has been wasted by Chelsea this season as a left-back. We all know that. He's done a good job at times, you have to say that. I'd say overall he's probably been about seven. Rating average rating for the season at left back is seven over the course of the season, but he's not a left back, is he? He's a left sided centre back. The guy is naturally gifted there, and you you saw his performance with Axel Dizazi away at Man City, and the two of them celebrating clearances and blocks and tackles like they just scored a goal in the World Cup final. The two of them, Colwell is someone that Chelsea need to nurture. They've got him already tied to a six and a half year deal. They need to just, just build the rest of the team around people like him. People in football will tell you that to be successful, you need a successful base to build from. But most importantly of all, you need that spine for the team that you stick with over the course of a few seasons and you build around. And if anything, once you get that settled team, that settled spine and, and sort of the settled nucleus of your squad... You're only going to make one, maybe, or two signings per season. And that's talking about both windows. Colwell is someone that Chelsea needs to keep hold of and need to focus on. The guy is natural talent, naturally gifted, an outstanding footballer. And I just hope that any, any advances by PSG or Liverpool, anybody else like that, will be just told by Chelsea to bugger off. It's not happening. Levi Colwell... Is the future of our football club. He's already impressed this season in a position he's, he shouldn't be playing. But by playing his natural position, he's been outstanding. What's your take on Cole Will? What's your take on him possibly being sold to balance the books? Hopefully you agree with me. It's complete nonsense. Others will go. Let me know in the comments section. Second up, we're going to talk about Mikhailo Mudrik. And it's being reported on various news outlets which you've all probably seen on social media or even the, the actual articles themselves it's being reported that Chelsea's coaching staff and the manager don't believe he's of the right mentality to succeed within the framework of the team currently as it is at Chelsea and he could be sold in the summer now as we all know back in January Bayern Munich was sniffing over Mikhailo Mudrik and Chelsea rejected any advances for a loan move but they might now change their mind with relation to letting him go. So what is the problem with Mikhailo Mudrik? Now, I've played football to a half-decent semi-pro standard, amateur standard, nowhere near professional levels. But when you go out on that football pitch, no matter who you're playing for, you need to perform. You need to feel comfortable. You need to feel confident. And you need to get things out of your head and just be free to play your football, your natural game of football, 
your instinctive football, whether you're playing in the park with your mates or you're playing professionally, it's the same. It's confidence game football. It's it's having your clear head, you know, having the freedom to go and enjoy playing football and actually being able to play instinctively, not to think about it too much and just play instinctively. Look at Eden Hazard's Mikel Obi Wan's podcast talking about how he used to play. He used to hate the training week in all, all every day of the week. And then he got to have a release and go and play and enjoy his game on the weekend. And that's how you should be as a footballer. Now, Mikhailo Mudrik has got absolute God-given talent in abundance. We all know that. We can all see it. I just think, in my own personal opinion, and, and tell me I'm wrong in the comment section, I think that this whole price tag that he got signed for, the big move to the Premier League, to Chelsea, has, is really getting has got to his head. And he can't play instinctive football. He can't relax and play his natural game. He's too, he's too focused on trying to impress and trying to do the right thing and trying to not make mistakes in games. I mean, we've seen him where he's so hesitant to take people on. And he'll rather just come back inside. Or when he tries something, it might it's not something full on, like full pelt down the wing. He might come in and try a dribble and he loses the ball. He falls over. And his confidence is taking an absolute pounding ever since he joined the football club. There has been moments at Chelsea where Mikhailo Mudrik has been outstanding. Glimpses of pure genius and glimpses of brilliance. And surely you have to say, well, well it's down to the coaching staff to get the best out of him and to continue to do so. Not to just give up on him. If and this is what we're reading with these reports that the people are talking about, we need to keep going with Madrid. We need to keep on at him to try, to try and get the best out of him, to build his confidence levels up. Now, by being benched for most of the season, he's not going to help his confidence at all. Playing bit part and coming on for 20 minutes, 15 or 10 minutes in a game is not going to help him. But the only way he can get back in the football team, back in the starting eleven, is if he delivers on the training pitch consistently, he's given an opportunity and he takes it. The problem is when he has been given opportunities, he hasn't. And that's the problem. But for me, you have to look at the guy. Again, natural God-given talent. And if it was me being his manager or one of his coaches, I'll be encouraging him to just use his pace. First and foremost, just rely on your, your actual pace that you've got in abundance when you come up against defenders in the Premier League. What we see with Mudrik is he collects the ball and he's very, very hesitant, as I'm saying. He likes to hold the ball up. He might either look inside or, you know, he's, he's not too sure about what he wants to do with the ball. He might sort of front a defender up and the defender might just square up to him and he just thinks not having that and he just goes back inside or backwards. Why can't he knock the ball beyond him and just keep turning them? Even if it's like for four or five times in the first half, yes, the defender might get the better of him three or four times, but there'll be that one opportunity where he just grinds his direct opponent down and he gets him behind and causes problems. And what happens with that is then the rest of the defensive line think we have to cover him because he's getting beat now. They drop off and it creates space for everybody else. Mikhailo Mudric could be a success at Chelsea and in the Premier League. He's got the ability to do so. He's got the pace to do so. But until he gets confidence by playing a run of games, confidence from people that are around him, he's not going to get that and he won't succeed at the football club. And if the message that the coaching staff are saying is that he's not right for what we want, he's going to go. And he will be a success somewhere else. I guarantee it. So it's up to, to Chelsea. It's up to them. It's to, to the, the, the hierarchy. We've invested a lot of money in him. 60-odd million in a first down payment with around 25 to 30 million after that in add-ons. Not the 88 or 100 million you're hearing about. It's up to them to decide what they want to do. But for me, it's someone that could be an absolute gem for us. Someone young, someone God-given ability, someone with actual class that just needs to be given the right environment to play, confidence to play, and just someone that can literally change a game on an instant. You don't see them often. They're very few and far between. And we need to polish that little diamond. If it's, if it's down to me, we'd polish it. We wouldn't discard it. 
What do you think about Mudrick and what I'm saying? Does it make any sense to you or do you just completely think, no, he's had his chance and he's gone? Let me know. Comment section. Now, finally, we're going to talk about Raheem Sterling, who always proves people wrong, according to Jacob Steinberg, who's basically talking in The Guardian, saying, cup final composure key as Raheem Sterling seeks to change the narrative. And his first paragraph on his article, I'll read it to you, says this, Raheem Sterling's critics should know better than to write him off. Nobody should be surprised at the winger's response to being booed off during Chelsea's calamitous home defeat by Wolves earlier this month. It was typical of Sterling to win back his place in the starting eleven and disrupts Man City's title chances by scoring against his old team last weekend. I was just talking about Mikhailo Mudrik and my impression of Mudrik, who's just not delivered at all on anywhere near a consistent basis or or have enough, you know, moments where he, you know, he forces his way into the thinking. Raheem Sterling has, for me, the guy, he sort of comes across as if, you know, you sort of know if with Sterling in the first 10 minutes of a game, whether he's up and at it or he isn't. Now, what I will say is that <clears throat> Chelsea were badly defeated at Anfield. We, I've mentioned on this channel about the game we played at Anfield. It was an absolute embarrassment is what it was. It was just an embarrassing performance for such a big game against one of our historic rivals. We ate them. And for someone going back to his old club to go and prove a point, he wasn't bothered. Along with most of the other players, let's face it, in that game, it was just shocking. After that performance, we play at Wolves at home. Poor performance again, and he gets booed. Now, for me, it's not the fact that, that Chelsea fans are, are alienating him or digging him out, but I just think it's, it's over a period of time where you're watching Raheem Sterling do it for Man City, you know, and his, his contribution for their title wins and stuff like that, the numerous trophies they won from that left-hand side, and what a threat, what a danger he was. And I don't remember Sterling having that, that much of a bad game, or if he did, it was only few and far between. The problem is that Chelsea, yes, we've been struggling in the last couple of seasons since he joined, but surely this is one of the guys who's, you know, he's 29 now. He's one of the guys that this young squad looked to with his vast experience, along with like Santiago Silva, to lift people to be like a role model, you know, to set the benchmark in training on that football pitch to show this is what it means to play for Chelsea because Raheem Sterling knows, Thiago Silva knows what it means and what it takes and how successful we've been because we had the, the levels up here and Sterling doesn't do enough to, to get to those levels consistently and that's why Chelsea fans got the ump. That's why they booed him because they've had enough of it. So, Yes, his performance against Man City was okay. I'm not going to say it was great. It was okay. Because up until the point he scored, it wasn't, it wasn't outstanding. It wasn't fantastic, was it? Let's be honest. Took his goal fantastically well. And if anything, we should have just carried on doing it the same way. Second half, I've already said that in another video I've done on the channel recently. So have a look for that. But Raheem Sterling is someone who needs to do needs to be at seven after eight every single game that he plays for Chelsea, week in, week out. There's no more excuses. You know, Thomas Tuchel will play him on the right-hand side. Sterling has, has openly said on record he likes to play on the left-hand side, cutting in. That's his favoured position. Tuchel played him majority of the time on the right. Didn't suit him. So we sort of went with it. We gave him a bit of a pass because he was playing somewhere he wasn't comfortable but because he's now playing on the left-hand side predominantly, yes, there's times where he has to switch because maybe of a substitution, but he's playing that left-hand side and he needs to be a threat the whole game. He needs to be a threat every single game. He needs to be a threat that's, or someone, as I said, seven, half, eight as the minimum, week in, week out, saying to everybody else in this squad, this is the level you need to play at. Because the problem is he hasn't been anywhere near that and that's why Chelsea fans have got frustrated. So what can Raheem Sterling do if he starts in the cup final against Liverpool this weekend? Well, for me, the first thing he does is he looks himself in the mirror and he says that what performance against Liverpool at Anfield was shocking. I need to go and make a real statement in this game and take the game to Liverpool. Take the game to the young fullback who's getting all the plaudits 
for covering for Trent Alexander Arnold, run him amok, show him up, bring him back down to earth, along with the rest of the Chelsea players who hopefully on this run of good games can give us the the Carabao Cup. That's what we hope for. That's my opinion on Sterling. What do you agree? Do, do you agree with what I'm saying? Does it make any sense? Are you completely different? Let me know in the comments section. Bit of a longer video from me just to explain this sort of stuff that's just going through my head. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. It's, it's just no sort of shenanigans, no graphics, fancy graphics and stuff. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, drop a like on it. Post your comments in the comments section and subscribe to the channel. So thanks for watching. And just a note to say my live match commentary will be back this Sunday. Carabao Cup final, Chelsea v Liverpool. I'll talk you through the game, ball by ball coverage, radio style, actual ball by ball, not a stupid watch along. If you've never seen them before, check out my channel for commentary. Have a look, scroll through and get a feel for it because it's genuine. I'll see you Sunday. Have a good rest of the week. Well, have a good Friday and your weekend. And I'll see you back here on the channel on Sunday for live match commentary. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Thank you. Let me know your comments on anything discussed. See you soon.